Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. Today we go to Las Vegas in the Xfinity Series and in the Cup Series. We do have Eric Jones in the Xfinity car going into today's episode for this race. So we were expecting some good things from the uh, former JGR driver. Obviously we've taken over his ride in the Cup Series so we figured we'd help him out and put him in one of my cars in the Xfinity Series. We changed the number actually to white on the cars. You see now on your screen Eric Jones would qualify in the fifth position and obviously start right behind the 20 of Christopher Bell but he would actually get forced three wide going down into turns one by the seven of Justin Allgaier kind of getting caught off guard there as he came out of turn two so he would quickly drift back to about the ninth position or so but he would be able to quickly hop up to the top line and be able to gain all those positions that he lost back and by the time he came towards about 10 or so laps ago he would actually make a move to make it three wide on the outside of Daniel Hemrick and Christopher Bell and he would go through to take the lead here in Las Vegas and Jones would not look back. He would drive away with the lead as he came through the final few laps of this race. Now towards the final lap, about half a lap to go as he went down into turns three and turns four for the first time, or for the final time, sorry. And we had two wins last season with this team and it's about to become one today this season as Eric Jones would come through the uh, trial. He would bring the team home its first victory of the season here in Las Vegas. A great effort by Eric Jones. Puts our Xfinity, te Xfinity team already locked into the playoffs, so we don't even have to worry for the rest of the regular season, but hopefully we can get some more victories with this team. Jones will be in the car a handful more times in the regular season, and maybe we'll put him in the car for the playoffs. You never know, but uh, now it's time to set our focus on the cup race. We usually struggle at the Las Vegas spring race for some reason. We usually find ourselves getting into some trouble, so we were trying to avoid that coming into this episode, and as we came in to qualifying, coming through turn scene four, obviously now down a single car qualifying just like they do it in real life unfortunately at this point as we come through onto the apron crossing the line we will start p12 in vegas with a 30.817 as we completely destroy the car we will be starting beside martin tricks jr so this should be a fun one as you get ready to see your pole sitter and it is going to be ryan blaney today the monster energy nascar cup series makes its first stop in las vegas for the running of the pennzoil 400 presented by jiffy lube Vegas has grown so much in popularity, the NASCAR doubled down and added a second race in 2018. Today, the field is stacked with NASCAR drivers seeking to get on a roll. In 2017, eventual cup champion Martin Truex Jr. picked up his first win of the year here, also becoming the first driver ever to win all three stages in a single race. Will he hit the trifecta again today? Let's head on down to the track. We're just about ready to get underway on PRN. All right, we are ready to go green here in Las Vegas. The first of two Vegas races this season. We come back here in the playoffs. Kurt Busch posted some fast laps in practice. We might have to watch out for him today as Ross Chastain will start in the back after failing technical inspection. Daniel Suarez, our former car now, will be starting in the back after replacing a transmission as we get ready to start alongside our rival and new teammate of Martin Truex Jr. We're ready to go green here in Las Vegas. Blaney and Bush on the front row as the green flag is out. And we are underway here from the 12th position alongside the 19 of Truex who's immediately going to push up the track so I'm going to move up the track along with him to give him the room because like I said we're going to be extra careful here at the beginning of this season trying to keep Martin Truex Jr. away from being a rival and him pushing me up towards the wall actually helped me as we would end up gaining some positions here moving into the top 10 already as we come down the back straight away as I would back out of the three wide there with Kurt Busch as we battle alongside our former teammate of Clint Boyer as we go down into turn three now Bowman looks to my inside as we come through the center of the corner getting some momentum through the center now through the exit of the corner, closing in quickly on the back of Kurt Busch. We're going to look to the outside of him and make a three wide with him and Joey Logano as we come through to complete the first side, making a little bit of contact with the one car there as we head down into turns one. Kurt Busch did win this race last season in the playoffs, so we look for him to be strong today as he's going to make it a uh, three wide just about up the inside of the three. We're going to do that now as we make a three wide with them as we come down the back straight away now as we try to look to the inside of Clint Boyer, but we back out of that as we go down into turn three now as we have a chance to look to the inside of Kevin Harvick though, but the car just pushed up a little bit too much there as we would look to the inside of him though as we came through the trial with just a belt and we would end up getting past Kevin Harvick and move into the eighth position by the time we came to lap five now three wide with Boyer and Blaney the post sitter who'd been dropping back pretty quickly so we would work our way up into the sixth position within the first five laps of this race 
so a great start for us here in Las Vegas, and we would continue to work our way forward as we would move into the top five and also look to the inside of Kyle Larson as we came to tend to go on the stage, trying to take the fourth position away from the number 42. Drivers went down in turns one and turns two, side by side with the 42 of Kyle Larson now as we come out of turn two. A chance to move into the fourth position, and we would clear the 42 of Kyle Larson going down the back straightaway and move up into that fourth position as we went down into turn three. Kurt Busch, he was working his way through the field pretty quickly. He had moved up to second and had run down his brother of Kyle Busch. Kurt Busch has won uh, stages in both races this season so far, and by the time we came to lap 15, Kurt Busch had gotten past Kyle Busch for the lead as we were battling now with Joey Logano as Hamlin would look to my inside and make a three wide as we went down the back straightaway. Three wide in the middle between Hamlin and Logano now as we go down into turn three. Hamlin's going to definitely be able to get to the position. We've certainly already had a run-in with Denny Hamlin this season back in the last episode at Atlanta when we might have come down on him or he just stuck his nose in a little bit late and hit me in the left rear. Either way, we made some contact and as we came to the final lap of the stage, still in the fourth position trying to hold on to P4, but the car was really falling off and I'd moved up to the top because Clint Boyer, he was running me down now as he looks to my inside as we come out of turn two, going down the back straightaway for the final time here in stage one as we head down into turn three. Kurt Busch has won a uh, stage and earned himself a playoff point in both races this season, and he's going to do it for three races in a row as Kurt Busch will come through to win stage one and get another playoff point as we hang on to get P4 in the first stage. So uh, a solid first stage for us, and hopefully we can uh, increase our position in the next stage just to get those few extra spots. As we have three JGR cars here in the top five, certainly looking like we might have chosen the right team to come to this season as our teammate uh, Martin Truex Jr. He is way out of the top ten, and we would come to pit row, take two cans of fuel, four tires, and you see there we come up P4 as we get ready to start stage two. We're and we're ready to start the second stage here in Las Vegas from behind our team and Kyle Busch as the green flag is out and we are back on the way for the start of this second stage now it's Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch the two Busch brothers on the front row they have been really good at this track since we've come to the 2019 DLC specifically Kurt Busch uh, won this race in the playoffs last season like I said earlier and he tries to go twice in a row here in Las Vegas as we come into turn two Kurt Busch does clear his brother Kyle Busch as we battle alongside the 14 and now the 11 as we head down towards turn three he's just trying to find a way around our teammate Kyle Busch who always seems to be strong obviously last season in our career mode he finished the season with seven wins looked to be the championship favorite ended up being the worst I believe in the final four as uh, after we finished Homestead so an unfortunate end of last season for Kyle Busch and he wants to change it again this season now as he looks for his second championship as we come through turns one and two getting into the wall there as we went up the track and that would damage the car a little bit 100% my mistake right there as we come down the back straight away losing positions from that as we move down to the ninth position as Harvick looks to my inside so we certainly have a little bit of damage on the car but it shouldn't be too impacting to the cars who barely get into the back of Harvick there as we come out of turn four and as we came to lap three, we would still be in the ninth position as we came out of turns one and two, though, building a big run up on the outside line on Harvick and Logano. And we would make it three wide on the inside as we went down into turn three. As we push up the track a little bit, though, as Logano, he's going to back out of the situation as it leaves just me and Harvick as Kurt Busch continues to lead over now. Second place of Denny Hillman as Kyle Busch. He had fallen back, too, with me as we would come through, though, by the time we came to lap 10 of 17 in the stage, we had worked our way back into the sixth position. At this point, I was trying to run the middle to top line. It seems like the top line it works much better for me in turns one and two, especially in the long run, than the inside line does. So you certainly see me move my way up the track, and as we came to lap 11, still running in the sixth position, Jamie McMurray behind me had been running me down a little bit at this point, so we were just trying to get away from them, as Truex had gotten behind him as well. So Truex now in the top ten, our rival, so I was certainly driving harder, trying to stay away from Martin Truex Jr. now as we came through out of turn four. And we still would be in the sixth position as we just came to two laps to go now in the stage. McMurray even closer as we head down towards turns one in the ten curve. Almirola goes spinning up ahead and down to the apron. He goes in towards the inside wall. And that would bring out a caution here. And that would end the stage early as Kurt Busch would pick up yet another playoff point as Kurt Busch looks to be maybe one of the dominant cars early in the season. But Almirola takes a big hit there. I believe he might have gotten stage points. But we would pick and fall back to 19th due to the AI pit strategy, but I wasn't too concerned. I know we can work our way back forwards, and hopefully we can do it real quick as the final stage is underway here in Las Vegas from behind the three of Austin Dillon and the Richard Childress Racing number three cars. We take it to the inside right away, making it three wide as we have a big run as we head down towards turns one. This is the furthest back we've been all races. We have a bit of a checkup just in front of us, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful here. Don't want to make a silly mistake because we know we have a fast car. We can probably still 
easily get a top 10 out of this. This is not the longest final stage in the world. We only got about 27 to go, but we can definitely get a top 10 out of this. And maybe if we're lucky, we can still pull off a top five if we can get a caution or something. Now, as we look to the inside of Alex Bowman, cutting down to the apron as we come through to complete this first lap in this final stage as Kurt Busch continues to lead. He took the lead about halfway through stage one and he hasn't looked back since as he has been a rocket in this race and he is certainly going to be hard to beat now as we come down the back straight away looking to the left rear of Ryan Newman in the six as we head down towards turn three continuing to move our way forwards now as we do see a big obstacle up ahead and that's the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. He is still a rival so we're definitely going to have to be careful here. We're going to have to play our cards right and it's pretty much a chess match. We have to make our move at the right time if we want to get past the 19 and get away now as you head down into turns one and turns two. Blaney is on his inside and this could be a chance for me if we can make a three wide as he pushes up out of turn two and obviously I take the opportunity and we make a three wide with Blaney and Martin Truex Jr. using the Blaney as a pick to get past the 19 cars we head down into turn three. We would be able to get past them both and move up into the top 10 already now to the ninth position as we came through to lap 48 at this point. We had moved up to all the way to P7 as we had passed Danny Hamlin and Kyle Larson and gotten to the left hand side of Jamie McMurray as we came out of turn four we would get ahead of McMurray to move into the sixth position so we were certainly setting our sights now on the top five for sure as we came through to hit 19 laps to go at this point in the race and at this point I'd started to run the top line again or middle line or so down in turns one and two because I felt like that was really my best shot of keeping up this pace because once I went to the bottom with these more worn tires, it was really becoming a little bit tough again to build up the pace that I needed. And as we went down into turns three and turns four, we now get a chance to look to the inside of Kevin Harvick as we're certainly faster than these cars right around us right now as we move into the top five at this point and set our sights on Joey Logano, the number 22, who came up short of a championship last season. Obviously, Harvick won the championship as he's now a two-time champion as we come through turns one and two. Now as we came to lap 50, looking to the inside of Logano, finally, Danny Hamlin had joined the party. He made a three wide with myself and Logano earlier in this race but now as we go down into turns one on the inside of Joey we would be able to battle alongside him as he's going to fight back on that outside though as he doesn't want to give up the position but we would be able to prevail as we came down the back straightaway just edging out in front of him at the moment as we went down into turns three Kurt Busch continuing the lead over Clint Boyer and Kyle Busch there in the third position is Logano he just doesn't want to give up the fight but we would be able to get clear of him as we came through and exited turn four and came through the tribal and by the time we came to lap 56 we had run down third place Kyle Busch as Hamlin would follow through as Hamlin was much faster than me I felt but we were doing everything I could to hold him off now as we came down the front straightaway I believe Hamlin's one of the fastest cars on the racetrack at this point as we cross the line on the back bumper of our teammate now of Kyle Busch but we would end up getting a caution here with 11 laps to go and to be honest, I didn't necessarily want to restart at this point because my car was starting to slow up a bit. You saw Hamlin was certainly faster than me. So I was a little bit concerned as we get ready to go green late here in Las Vegas as the green flag is out and we are on our way once again. Now Kurt Busch tries to pull off the victory as we give a shot to the back of Clint Boyer and we accidentally look to his inside. I didn't even mean to get there. So I get back in line behind him as I felt like that was going to be a big cluster if we went into turns one three wide there with him and Kyle Busch as we get down behind Denny Hamlin. If you look at my mirror, you you see that there's not all the cars there so something must have happened uh, with a blown engine or something behind us now as we go down into turn three on the inside of Denny Hamlin as we try to regain that position that we just lost to him as we come through the center of the corner pushing up a little bit now as we come out of turn four down the front straightaway to come through to complete the first lap since the restart now as we go side by side with our Joe Gibbs racing teammate now as we go down into turns one there you see only about 20 cars maybe or so got through so certainly someone in the midfield or something blew an engine and held everyone up on the restart and that's why we got that caution as well now as we battle alongside the 14 of Clint Boyer as we go down the back straightaway Kurt and Kyle Busch first and second now as we come through turns three again, trying my best to clear the 14 of Clint Boyer but he's certainly going to try and hang on on my right rear and he's going to do a good job of doing it now as we come through the tribal cutting down to the apron trying to get clear of him as we go down towards turns one but unable to do so at the moment and obviously, uh, me and Clint Boyer battling side by side like this is a blessing to Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch as they get to fight it out now for the victory as we're running out of time quickly, but we would be able to clear Clint Boyer as we went down the back straightaway and as we came to just three to go in this race, still in P3 as we go down into turns three. The 11 is going to stick his nose up the inside again like Atlanta, and he's going to make contact with my left rear now as we hang on to the car, thankfully, as I see Truex coming, so I immediately move back up the track because I don't want to get pile-drived into the wall now as a mistake on 
on both of our parts maybe again has costed me a bunch of positions this time we don't knock the wall down so we keep the car in one piece but certainly not what we needed to have happen now is we hit two laps to go at this point coming down the back straightaway looking to the left rear of Martin Truex Jr. now is there. we're gonna get out of the throttle let him have the position because I'm not going to get wrecked going down into turn three like I said we're trying to keep Truex away from being a rival but unfortunate what happened there with me and Hamlin two races in a row that we have gotten into it with a teammate in the same teammate of Denny Hamlin as we cross the line to take the white flag here in Las Vegas. Kurt Busch leads just over his brother Kyle Busch. He's about a car length ahead as we come through turns one and turns two. Kurt Busch has been on fire within the first few races of the season. He won a stage in Daytona, got a playoff point. He won a stage in Atlanta and got a playoff point. He's won stage one and two today and he's about to sweep the stages as we come through turns three and four. For the final time, Kurt Busch comes out of turn four. He will win in Las Vegas to get more playoff points as we come through to finish in the seventh position when we really should have been third or fourth. Uh, just I came down on Denny, I think, uh, again. I think that one was more of my fault than Atlanta was, so it was just kind of an uh, uh, unfortunate situation. But we have all JGR cars here in the top ten, so at least uh, we get to have a solid finish for this team. And J Chase Elliott there in 40 of 38 laps down, certainly not what you like to see for a driver like that, so unfortunate for him. But uh, hopefully we can uh, keep up this momentum because we've certainly been uh, performing fairly well this season. Atlanta, Daytona, those were somewhat rough races for me. Uh, I felt like this was the best race that we have run all season, so hopefully we can keep it up now. But we're going to ISM Raceway in the next episode, and we know how that goes. I might put the tire wear and fuel down to uh, just times one for that race, or just normal, because I feel like uh, some tracks you have to experiment. I think ISM Raceway is one of those tracks that doesn't work very well with uh, times two tire wear and fuel. So we're going to try times one for Phoenix in the next episode and uh, maybe try that. I usually do that at Watkins Glen in Sonoma as well as the tire wear is horrible at those two tracks. So we might try the ISM Raceway, but if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those would all be incredibly, incredibly appreciated. And there you see the playoff standings. Kurt Busch out front with 10 playoff points and a win and Landon Castle right now, the last guy in. That's obviously going to change, but I will see you guys in the next episode for ISM Raceway. Thank you for taking the time I need today to watch this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching everybody and have yourselves a great day.